Hey, good afternoon, everybody. It is 23rd of December. This may seem like a weird time to talk about HVAC companies, but I felt that um, I was off a little bit and getting some content out. Uh, and we've seen some spikes with regard to interest in this category. So I figured I would give you some details on valuation of HVAC companies. So one thing to keep in mind is that um, in the South, for what should be a readily obvious reason, um, air conditioning companies and heating companies, um, let's just call them what they are, air conditioning companies, are a necessity. They are not a nice to have, they are a must have. And for the life of me, I don't know how anybody lived here uh, prior to air conditioning down here in Florida. So um, here's some rules of thumb. If you look in the upper left hand corner, um, where I'm going to put the mark. Um, let's get a little crayon going here. Um, 25 to 35% of sales and plus inventory, two to three times SD&E plus inventory, two to four times EBIT, and 2.75 to three times EBITDA is how these things sell. Now, um, we need to caveat that. Obviously, a one-man band isn't going to get a 2.7 times to a three multiple. It, it, the variable of how much money a business produces at income, the quality of the books, those are the variables that impact that as well. But on whole, a, a standard company out there can get you know, the 2.75 to three times cash flow. And when you get to really, really large companies, the multiples can go up. And of course, there are variables that matter within that. Um, there are about 90,000 HVAC companies in the United States. They run at about 4% to 5% profit margin. That is not cash flow, that is a 4 to 5% profit margin. The average revenue per employee is about 218,000. Um, that number goes up when it's a smaller company, a two man, three man company, because um, there just isn't as much SGNA support staff in the back office. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, the ratio ideally is a five to one, i.e. one person in the office to every five field techs in the field. Um, the average number of company size out there is 3.6 to four employees uh, in every company. So that should tell you that the industry is really, really fragmented. And from a wage standpoint, techs generally make around 48 grand a year, which is pretty good for um, you know contracting business or related fields. Um, in Southern states where heat's an extreme, you'll see that number creep up, but that work is tough, tough work, um, particularly on the installation side. New construction makes up about 59% of the business that's out there and is less valuable than um, service work. So if you look below there in the middle of the page where I've got some arrows, the higher percentage of business associated with residential work uh, is more valuable than installation work. Um, service agreements drive value. New construction is a negative in the eyes of buyers. Construction work is of value, um, or rather commercial service work is of value. But I want to caveat that because we don't know what COVID will do. Um, as you can imagine, a lot of commercial HVAC work is having to do with the restaurant space and what our world looks like post uh, COVID with restaurants and their survivability and the number of opportunities out there is definitely um, in question. So this data is old data, so we don't know what the world will look like on the on the backside uh, or when normalcy on commercial HVAC will return. Um, the mix of revenue matters uh, in this business. Um, HVAC companies um, do installs and they do service work. One is not the one is not only doing install. They will do service, or if they are only doing install, it's on the commercial side, like specializing in healthcare. Um, on the the reality is is that HVAC units burn out and they break and they need to be repaired because they're exposed to moisture and moving parts. And it's generally every five to ten years, depending on what the maintenance programs look like, that these pieces of equipment have to be replaced. So there will always be an installation component, and that's really, really high margin work. Um, the other good dynamic on that front is that the HVAC installation work on existing customers tends to spike at one time. So there's an up tempo and an operational insanity, and you look over to the far right where I say summer can break you. 
smart HVAC companies are trying to market to get installations done prior to summer when the consumer is trying to stretch out their um, their, their existing equipment, which you know five to seven thousand dollars. You can understand that, and they'll kind of hey, I'll make it one more year, and then that sucker goes down. And what happens is the five to six man company is out there trying to juggle service calls plus installation. It is challenging to do that in summer because it's not just one unit going down, it's multiple units going down. And, you know, if you have no HVAC and it's 100 degrees out, you're going to call whoever can come out. So loyalty becomes a challenging factor. Wages in terms of percentage of revenue is about 22%. Cost of goods runs around 40 to 42 your rent is really low in this business. Nobody cares about retail space. Your profit margins, again, around 4%. One of the soft parts of this business is they're not really good marketers, so they spend very little money on marketing. Um, residential homes makes up almost 30% of the business. And that this should be readily obvious. And then there's some specialization in terms of retail, education, and healthcare. Healthcare, there is special HVAC systems required for operating rooms and and um, COVID units and intensive care. So highly specialized, their margins kind of um, are different than the rest of the sector. So you may wanna do some more research on why that is in healthcare and I can shed some light on that. I've dealt with a couple. Office and manufacturing, you'll see I made a note with regard to office. Um, COVID much like in the commercial installation work with regard to restaurants, we're gonna see some changing in the revenue associated with Class A space in offices and how it impacts HVAC. Um, the the industry is really, really diversified. And by that, I mean, there's lots of little players. Um, and I think you'll see, I made a note, it's widespread between the haves and the have nots. You've either got two to three man companies or you've got massive companies. Um, and the barrier to whether you're one or the other is your access to capital to scale it and your skill as a manager. Um, because particularly in the South where new construction is happening, um, there's ample opportunity for people, which is why you see private equity companies grappling with um, and grabbing HVAC companies um, because there's an opportunity of continued revenue growth. And there is somewhat of a service revenue impact or opportunity on annuity service calls to generate consistent revenues, which is always more attractive. Um, Average sales for a retail, a field tech in the field is about 250K per person. Um, really good ones are doing 350. Your field techs are actually salespeople. So that has to be carefully managed, but they have to see opportunity where it is and understand they're in the business of selling service and selling upgrades of equipment because they are technical experts. Um, and they're interfacing with the customer as much as your call center is. And, you know, if you've got a good field tech in the field who's touching customers, they can be collecting data and upselling equipment, upselling filters, upselling maintenance programs. Um, just like in the old route sales day, those guys in the field are, are absolutely critical. You get a bad one, your number's gonna be down. You got a good one, don't be afraid to pay them. If at 50 grand, you know, they're producing a crap load of revenue. So um, that's kind of a basic on summarizing. These are highly attractive companies. They do have barriers to entry in terms of contracting licenses, and we can help you navigate that process. But this is everything you need to know about valuing an HVAC company.